Hi, I'm the Craft Maiden and in this video I'll show you how to make this Dragonborn wall decoration. So first of all we need a template. You can always google one or use the one I have in the links down below in the description box together with all the materials and tools used in this video. As a base I'm using a piece of wood that I'm tracing the shape of the template on. And by lining up one of the sides I only need to cut three sides instead of four. And for this I'm using a regular handsaw. This is optional, but I like to soften the edges a bit when I will be covering it in fabric later on. So I'm marking the edges to make sure I don't go crazy with the filing. To make this dragon I'm going to use a base of extruded polystyrene. I find it useful in crafting because it's easy to carve and sculpt by only using simple tools as for example scalpels and files. But if you want to use heat tools just remember if you don't know the chemicals in the fumes it might be toxic and should therefore never be used with heat tools. So back to the DIY. To transfer the pattern onto the foam I only place the template on top and trace the lines with a needle. And before cutting it all out, I trace the punctures with a marker to make things easier. And when I'm cutting the foam, I usually use a foam knife or a scalpel. And before making the angle cuts, I marked out where to make them. And if you want to make this dragon in any other materials as maybe clay or wood, feel free to do so. I'm going to cover this whole piece with Vorbla and if you don't know what it is, please check the description box for more information. I heated the Vorbla with a heat gun and placed it onto the foam. Then by using a sculpting tool I flattened the surface and shaped it so it got sharper lines. Cutting off the excess and then carefully heating the Vorbla again so not to melt the foam, I made a few adjustments and shaped the eye. When that's done, I made the same thing with the wings, by first tracing the pattern and then cutting it all out. But I would recommend looking at some reference photos when doing this, so you can see how it's shaped in some places. Here I'm scoring the foam a bit so I don't take off too much when shaping the wing. And if you're making this, please try to cut away from yourself to avoid any injuries. When I finished with the basic shape, I just transferred the rest of the lines. So I don't know really how to explain this part, but if you are scoring where the deepest part is supposed to be, and if you are placing the scalpel in an angle and you are making a cut from where the highest point is supposed to be towards the lowest, you should get a really nice angled cut. Don't forget to have some reference photos when you are doing this, because it makes it so much easier when you know how stuff looks like. This part here is supposed to be lower than the rest, so I needed to score the lines again and using my foam knife to cut away the excess. But because I cut all the way through, I had to glue on the pieces that's supposed to be there with polystyrene glue. And then I just kept on shaping the wing. When finishing all the cuttings I just heated some Vorbla big enough to cover the wing and then once again I used the sculpting tool to shape and flatten the surface. After cutting off any excess, I just kept a spare piece of warbler at the start of the wing for later when it's going to be fastened against the body. As the body is a really easy shape, I just made this off screen. Just remember to check the reference photos and you're good to go. And as with everything else, I covered it in warbler, but this time I made it in three pieces just to make it easier. At 
As the foam is so thin in the tail, it will probably deform somewhat. But by gently heating it up again and reshaping it on top of the template, and by holding it in place as it cools down, it should keep its shape. If the foam were to deform or melt underneath the warbler, you can always use the scrap pieces as filling. As the body is finished, I left a piece of warbler at the end to fasten the head with. And by gently heating the two and flattening it out with a sculpting tool, the seam should disappear. Before assembling the dragon, I sanded the whole thing to get smoother and sharper lines. And by placing the pieces on top of the template, it should be easier to know where all the body parts should go. Then I did the same thing as I did with the head and neck, and I gently heated the body and the wing and attached them together and smoothing out the surface with a sculpting tool. If it's need for more stability or filling, just use some scrap pieces of warbler again. By gently poking the warbler with a soldering iron, I could create the texture the wing has on the lowest part. And if you are doing this at home, please use a respirator and sit in a well-ventilated area. And if you by accident, just like me, made a hole in the warbler, just add another piece and go over it again. As this dragon had been through a lot, I added all the cuts and holes with a soldering iron as well. Be careful though, so you don't go through the foam, focus on the warbler and then cut the deepest cut with a scalpel. Because there's now a few holes into the foam, you should only use water-based paint, as the other solvent in spray paints may melt the foam. So for a base I used a black acrylic and when that's dried I used a silver one on top of that. So back to the board. As I wanted to hang it flat against the wall, I'm going to use the keyhole hangers again. If you can't get a hold of these or are unable to cut the hole, check out any other kinds of hangers that will fit your preference. So here I'm tracing out the middle and how far the fabric is going to cover the wood before marking out where to make the cut. I'm using my Dremel for this and you can sort of see how I made this hole in my other video, link is in the top right corner. And using really short screws I just screw it in place. I'm using fake leather to cover the wood as it matches the background in the game and I cut it into size so I had a good amount of fabric to fasten on the back. For this part I'm using a staple gun. I started in the middle on all sides so the fabric won't move and then working myself outwards to the corners. To avoid that the fabric gets bulky at the corners, I cut some of the excess off before stapling it into place. You can leave the backside as it is, but as I like to have a nice finish all around, I covered it in felt. To glue it on I used regular school glue and focused only around the edges and around the hanger. As the felt somewhat deforms when working with it, I used a much bigger piece than I needed, so that I just could cut off the excess afterwards instead. This is of course also optional, but I like to have a nice finish, so I used the black acrylic to cover any imperfections. So back to the dragon. To give him some depth, I used a watered down acrylic that I filled in all the nooks and crannies.
As the silver paint looked too new, I faded some black acrylics all over to make him look more time-worn. Then I gave him some highlights with silver acrylics and using the method called dry brushing. That means you have the smallest amount of paint on your brush as you first wipe most of it on a piece of paper. And to seal the paint I used satin varnish. To be able to stick the foam onto the fabric I used the polystyrene glue again as it worked really well. Do not use, however, hot glue on foam as it will make the foam melt. Because I repeatedly heated this dragon, it doesn't lie flat anymore, so I needed to use small nails to stick it onto the board. And if you, like me, don't have a nail setter, you can always use an Allen key, I have this one from Ikea, to get those nails in all the way. But do know the nails will only hold the warbler as the foam is too soft and they will loosen its grip. The final touch was to cover the nails and for that I used some wall fillers that I let dry before painting it over with a black and silver acrylics. Did you know I also have an Instagram where I post sneak peeks and other stuff? The link is down below in the description box together with all my social media. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you have any suggestions about future ones, please comment down below and I might give it a go. So thank you so much for watching, I hope to see you next time, don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome stuff. Bye!